Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh So hello everyone, welcome to our podcast In this podcast, we are gonna talk about others' experiences, stories, and others So before that, let me introduce myself So I'm Aldo Adir Jasafatoni I'm a second grade vocational high school student Majoring in software engineering And here we got our guest Nurisan Al Gifari, right? Yeah. And you are a first grade of vocational high school student. Yes. So he is currently majoring in software engineering. Yep. So today, what are you gonna talk about? I think I'm going. To, I want to talk about about how we learn English. Like how do I start being able to kind of speak English? The kind of the backstory of how it all went. Uh, I think that's it. That's it. Yeah. Okay. So, Isan will share his story about how he learned English. And maybe in a hard way, probably. Probably. Yeah. So, basically, he will share about his experience in learning English and. Talking English and something like that. Mm. So, yeah, maybe. So we are we gonna we are gonna start. So we're gonna start this podcast by reciting Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, so first, what are you doing? How's it going? I'm doing pretty well, actually. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Nothing much. Ah, uh, thankfully. So. Without any further ado, maybe I will ask you. So yeah, how did you start learning English? Mm, okay. So first of all, it's not like I. Uh, it doesn't start from like me learning English, like by reading books or something like that at first. Mm. Because yeah, I learned English from just watching YouTube videos, basically, pretty much. Where when I was little, I like to watch YouTube videos. Even yeah. though like, I usually watch what, Minecraft videos, even though mm. I don't really understand what the meaning of yeah. what they're saying, yeah. it's like, oh, cool video. I, uh, yeah, uh, that is, I didn't know how much it will impact on me in the future. So yeah, I would yeah. just watch a lot of Minecraft videos. I don't know what they mean, but sometimes, like little by little, like it, the words starts to kind of like make meaning of it. Yeah. You know? It's it's weird. Like your brain unconsciously recognizes a pattern in yeah. how they're saying. It's right. so like, uh, especially when it's a video uh, that you give, you have an, an image context and a sound. So, right. for example, when they, they say something like a word like jump and they jump, your brain kind of associates that jump word with the action of jumping. But unconsciously, like, you don't you don't think about it. It's it just happens. And yeah. you know, little by little, I start to okay, like maybe uh, oh, pretty cool. Like I can understand like all of this stuff. Like, Oh, yeah, and that all went on until I uh, started uh, reading, reading books, mm. reading articles online, especially. Yeah. Uh, you can learn a lot of words, vocabularies in it, uh, and watch a lot more YouTube videos, of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the pandemic came. The yeah. The coronavirus pandemic came. So uh, in the pandemic, uh, we were not allowed to go outside. I need to stay in my home, and yeah. all I can do is just use the computer, really. <laughs> So yeah, uh, Me too. So, yeah, so I became more like attached to computer. So mm-hmm. it's like uh, I have nothing to do. I like, uh, it's kind of boring. So I kind of joined yeah. communities, mm. especially English community. At first, it's not like uh, I'm not. I don't speak English pretty well. Mm. Uh, some may say it's patah patah. Yeah, patah, stuttering. Like, yeah, stuttering. Yeah. Like it's not. It doesn't really like mean you know, like the grammar's not great. Yeah. But thankfully, the community I joined in was like. Everybody was uh, was stuttering as well. Like they, they, yeah. don't, they don't have yeah they don't have well en- uh, good English as well as me. Yeah, I think that's the main point of uh, me being able to learn English. Uh, it's like oh like um like the co- yeah. community is supporting too. Yeah, community is supporting too, and so that I yeah since well it's the pandemic I have nothing to do. Yeah, I just use computer and just chat with everyone like pretty much every day. Yeah. It's, it's pretty cool like and then day after day after day till like a, a year something like that I started to be able to like kind of speak English be able to like 
own words on yeah. the fly. Mm. It's pretty cool. It's pretty, pretty interesting experience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And after yeah. And now here we are. <laughs> here we are speaking English directly. <laughs> yeah. Thankfully. So how when when did you start learning English? Hmm. Learning English. What do you mean by learning English? Like I just watch YouTube videos. Yeah. Something like. Watching video YouTube videos since when you start watching maybe English videos something like that something like elementary school first grade even first grade yeah oh that's pretty it's, young it's, it's really young. Uh, um it's it's not a good it's not a good uh, it's not a good thing to for a first grader first elementary school kid child to watch just watch YouTube <laughs> every day but like but yeah. It has. It does have a good impact. Yeah, I believe that everything has its own advantages and disadvantages. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So I actually also learned English almost as same as you. Actually, mm. I tried watching English videos, even though I didn't understand a lot. But you know that YouTube has a feature that. It can translate the built-in, how do I say, the class captions, mm, yeah. the subtitles. Transcription. Yeah, so the transcription can be translated. Mm. So I tried, trans, uh, tried doing that, and but it feels like it's, I, how do I say, like now I don't understand more. Like mm. when I understand uh, translate it to Indonesian, like I don't, I even more understand. Eh, how to say, it. like it harder to understand. It's yeah, something like that. Yeah, I can agree. Translations, uh, like uh, especially machine generated translations are yeah. not great. Yeah. They sometimes don't make a lot of sense. Yeah. And also, uh, it doesn't like. You know, reading translations, it's kind of like, um, not really a good way to kind of trans, in, in quote, translate English words, how they say. Uh, oh, really? Because, you know, uh, Indonesia and English differ. Yeah. They, they're different. Yeah. They have different word structure, no, not, not word structure. Some different like, paradigm. Yeah, like paradigm, uh, Grammar. cultures, grammars, and yeah. they have different verbs and words, phrasal verbs. They, they are different, like when you try to translate. Uh, English to Indonesia, they sometimes don't like. It's 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 sometimes it's hard. Like there is no word for an English word in Indonesia. Sometimes, so they use yeah. some like very uh, similar word, but not the exact meaning. Yeah, yeah, right. So like, yeah, I think watching like directly without any subtitles is a better way because uh, you kind of like try to your brain tries to associate it uh, yeah. directly without any Indonesian word or any. Uh, what's the patokan? Yeah, so like you associate the word with the action, not yeah, with the the, the Indonesian equivalent. Yeah, because yeah, because the words, the vocabularies, they they don't like they usually they don't mean the same thing. They usually like yeah. mean different in different contexts. They yeah. usually mean different. Like they they can be used in different things. Like yeah, I think that's what makes it different. Yeah, so that's a pretty good explanation. Um, but I believe that you also learn English in your school, right? Yeah, in school. Oh yeah, in school. Oh, well, um, I can say yes, I learned English in school, but it's not like you know, I, I'm not, I'm not really a fan of how they teach English in schools. <laughs> it's yeah. like, you know, you're le learning grammars, theories, like oh, you need to put this word here and make this do this and then do that like you need all of that thinking like what like what like do you, you need to think to speak like that's not how usually you how people usually do like yeah people just talk on the fly like they it's automatic you don't yeah. need to think about the grammar it the grammar needs to be internalized yeah you need to like have the brain kind of understood the grammar directly yeah. without any like thinking or anything yeah especially like yeah like that Mm, so, so yeah. yeah, it's more of a getting used to. You need to getting to, you know get exposed to people talking English, even though you don't know what they mean. Yeah, your brain starts to you know associate the words and actions with them. Yeah, 
So yeah, that's what I like about here in IDN. The you know the teachers here like to like talk English even though the students don't really understand what I mean. Yeah. It's like yeah, it's at first it's going to be a bit annoying, a bit of yeah. an annoyance, but yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, at the long run it's going to be very very impactful. Yeah, right. It's going to really form the right. English mind and be able to yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, I felt like when I was at my elementary school and my secondary school, it felt like, yeah, back then I learned English, a lot of grammars, but I felt like I got nothing, like, yeah, yeah I understood, but the application, the execution is not really good. I didn't speak well, I didn't even understand anything if I'll say but yeah I under I understood English more from videos so I actually watch English YouTube videos too even though I didn't understand I tried I also tried reading English articles but I I copied the text and and pasted it on Google Translate, <laughs> but yeah, you know, back then Google Translate wasn't as good as now. Yeah, of course. But yeah, oh, oh yeah, so back then, did you use Google Translate or something like that? I can't really tell, but I think I don't think I do. Like sometimes now, I when I like kind of uh, don't understand a sentence, I think, uh, what's the uh, what's this word? Like I sometimes put it in Google Translate instead. Or maybe even I, when I, uh, maybe I even translate Indonesian to English <laughs> for me to understand an Indonesian sentence. <laughs> it's really weird. But yeah, <laughs> the downsides of being uh, bilingual is that it's like uh, you can't have both languages to like be great. Like yeah, you, master yeah. at bo- both languages. Yeah, you can't you can't master at both languages. It it needs to be distributed. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like uh, it's like. Hmm. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so yeah, I I felt uh, that thing. So I actually came to something like Kampung Inggris. Mm, yeah, Kampung but Inggris. I actually wanted to go to Kampung Inggris, but sadly, Corona hit the world, and Kampung Inggris made a policy that uh, the the registration is only available for sef- for 17 years old or more mm. and back then I haven't got 17 mm. so I came to the name is Rumah Igris so it's like Kampung Igris but maybe I, I would say Kampung Igris Light or something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah it was in Jogja and I learned there maybe just two days I, I actually wanted to to learn completely but the schedule it conflicts with my online classes so I I couldn't complete it but yeah so back then like we have to speak English every day every time and when I when I went home like I forgot a lot of Indonesian as <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I can agree. So yeah, I think I I'm also agree that being bilingual or even trilingual is not that easy. Mm, yeah. Especially when you wanna master at both at the same time. Of course. Yeah. But yeah, so the main thing we are talking about here is English. So it's pretty surprising that you actually have to learn English by practicing, right? Yeah. By practicing, by speaking, by watching, by hearing someone talking English. And maybe it also applies to other languages. Right? Yeah, it, it will. It does. It like, does. Yeah, to be honest with you, uh, I haven't really spoken English like before. Like, being an idea and it's like my first experience talking in English with you. Really? Yeah, it's really surprising. <laughs> I haven't talked English, like spoken English uh, at all. I usually just think in English, like in my mind, like, okay, mm. do this, do this. It's not like me like speaking directly to somebody. So yeah, it's a, it's been a, an experience, absolutely. 
but man your speaking is like better than me <laughs> like yeah i thought i thought in english but maybe you thought more in english so like when you speak english for the first time like you sound more fluent than me yeah yeah it might sound fluent but for me it's not really that like it's 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 not native right? it's it's not really fluent it's, it's sometimes i uh, stutter a bit uh when i uh, my vocabulary is not that great as well mm. yeah i think it's more of it because i don't have a, a a person that i talk to i usually just talk to myself i think like yeah i have yeah you got like uh, what's the word like share vocabularies mm -hmm. so when somebody talk you know like uh, they have a word that I don't know maybe I can mm -hmm. you know my brain starts to oh, okay so that's what he meant so, like maybe I can use it in a word yeah yeah so that's the thing okay that's nice okay I think our time is up Pretty so yeah. basically from what I heard that you have to learn English not by only books right yeah. so you have to speak it you have to write it maybe you have to read it and other things that that you maybe got the impact directly instead of like what, oh, reading the theories and etc so yeah maybe that sums up for our podcast today so we we are gonna close this session by reciting hamdallah and doa for the majlis alhamdulillah rabbil alamin subhanakallahumma bihamdika shadallahi la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka so thank you everyone for watching and see you in the next session bye, bye.